Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. With your permission, I should like to start our afternoon session. At the outset, allow me to express my gratitude for the organizers of this event, of course, New Strategy Center, but also to extend my gratitude to uh, Mr. Campano and the splendid conditions they offer to us in order to have these uh, important meetings. I say important because we have the privilege this afternoon to have a special guest, the ministers of defense coming from Ukraine and Romania. We are looking forward to hearing extremely important and significant inputs with regard a very specific and important region we are living in. It is, about, it is about the Black Sea, of course, from the political military perspective, but also from the security and stability. The discussion about the Black Sea, I think it, it will be very important, very relevant, and equally a very good opportunity for you to ask the excellencies some questions and points of clarification with regard to the, um, the presentations they are going to forward to us. Once in the periphery of Europe, in recent years, the Black Sea region uh, reappeared on the policymakers' radar. The Black Sea is also in the proximity of affected by the ongoing conflict, meaning Syria, Iraq, but also regions with uh, some very complex problems of security and stability, like what is happening in Ukraine or in Western Balkans. Black Sea region periodically experienced periods of political confrontation. The overall rise of hostility is noticeable and urgent steps are needed to desescalate its tensions. This is a common shared perspective about this future horizon of the Black Sea, but in terms of attitudes and manners and procedures about how to reach this goal, there are differences of opinions. And I hope today we shall uh, learn something from uh, the perspective that the ministers are ready to provide to us. The Black Sea region is a cross order of cultures and civilizations. Today it remains highly heterogeneous, present for the time being in the Black Sea region are two European Union members, three NATO allies, two nations aspiring for NATO membership, and three countries seeking memberships of European Union. And one country who said that not only they will neglect, but also they will refuse the European Union and NATO values and standards. The diversity explains the virtual absence of regional identity and the failures of various regional integration projects. The Black Sea is still largely viewed through the lenses of military developments or as an area of transit of energy resources. But we should also concern that progress in the areas like democracy, human rights, the rule of law, media freedom and anti-corruption are parts of the Black Sea area 
and they are important also to address to, together with the other issues. There were some attempts, as you are fully aware, to ignite comprehensive regional cooperation in the 90s and 20s, but they were severely undermined by some recent developments of the tensions in the region. So this is my short presentation about the region. And uh, allow me to move, to kindly ask our invitees here, the Excellency, the Minister of Defense from Romania and Ukraine. And I shall start by uh, kindly ask uh, the Minister of Defense of Romania, His Excellency, Mr. Nikolai Chuka, to address our meeting. Please, Mr. Minister, you have the floor. Thank you very much for your very kind and quintessential introduction. Sir, um, your excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear distinguished guests, I would like to take this opportunity to uh, welcome the Ukrainian Minister of Defense being so kind to attend uh, this conference and also the Polish Chief of Defense, Raymond, very, very good seeing you again in Romania. And um, I'm also using this opportunity to uh, express my gratitude to uh, His Excellency Mr. Sorin Campano for hosting this, uh, uh, this event. And uh, I think University for Agriculture uh, seems to play a very important role, not only in educating our young uh, people, but also uh, um, uh, trying to find a place to what really means uh, policy for agriculture, which is, could become a, a security issue. So thank you very much for hosting that. Uh, I am very honored to participate in the fourth iteration of this prestigious event, the Black Sea and Balkans Security Forum. Allow me first to um, thank everyone who made this event possible especially to uh, um, new uh, security, uh, new strategy center, um, because uh, it is not so e easy in these uh, times uh, where we have to face these uh, public health issues caused by SARS-CoV-2 pandemic. Um, and also, it's very good to see um, so many friends in person here in Bucharest. Why the Black Sea matters? I will state the obvious from the beginning. Black Sea region is of strategic importance not only for Romania, but for the entire Euro-Atlantic area. We have a special interest in keeping it safe and predictable area, thus contributing to the European and transatlantic security. The new national defense strategy of Romania places a great importance to Black Sea region security. Black Sea region is a geographically and economically important crossroad and a critical intersection between Europe and Asia. It is home, as His Excellency Mr. Diaconescu mentioned, it is home to three NATO members, two NATO partners, Georgia and Ukraine, both of which suffered the direct impact of Russia's aggression. Our region is also key transit corridor for energy security, which is becoming an increasingly important component of national security. There are complex challenges we face in the region, which, if not overcome, will seriously affect both only our collective security, but prosperity of the region and the welfare of our citizens. Black Sea region has become the primary region within NATO area in which the credibility of the alliance's deterrence and defense posture is regularly tasted. 
Notwithstanding, in our perspective, and I know that many of you here today share this black, sh uh, share this, that Black Sea is one of the most vulnerable parts of the alliance, one that is increasingly exposed to military aggression and hybrid actions by Russia. Last March, it has been six years since Russia illegally annexed Crimea. The conflict in Ukraine remains in this day a rather complex and hard to be resolved matter. Russia is using Crimea for power projection, and this is a day-to-day -day reality. Furthermore, a specific aspect is the Russian military buildup of A to AD, AD systems, which can impede NATO's ability to reinforce the regional allies when it needed. On hybrid spectrum, the speed of fake news and propaganda in the region could fuel European skepticism. Taking into account also the belt of frozen conflicts which surrounded the Black Sea, we see the challenges in the region being persistent on medium and long term, and long term leading to an unpredictable and potentially high-risk environment. All this evolving strategic, strategic military and potential situation in the wider Black Sea region are producing effects well beyond the continuous of the region, the, the confines of the regions, towards Middle East and Eastern Mediterranean. If NATO has done a lot over the last six years for the Baltic region, especially for the countries close to the Russian border, Baltic states and Poland, and for the right reasons, complementing the progress by now, much remains to be accomplished in the greater Black Sea region. By saying that, by saying that I have to, this, to speak about what more can we do, bring we can do to bring security to the region. From a NATO perspective, the answer is quite natural. We need an enhanced allied capacity and posture in the region. Within this, this framework, the collective efforts should focus on achieving full maturity of allied collective defense projects. It means enhancing, enhancing the combat capacity of all the measures developed under the Taylor for Presence umbrella. We consider that is high time for NATO to, ad to adopt a common regional threat assessment and further, further, further on to put in practice the approach of one threat, one flank, one presence in order to properly secure the eastern flank. Romania is doing its fair share when it comes to strengthening the deterrence and defense posture in the region by shouldering as a framework nation the implementation of all TFP measures. At present, the land, the land dimensions measures are maturing. We talk about the multinational brigade southeast in Craiova, the multinational Divi division southeast in Bucharest, and the latest pro project, the multinational corps southeast headquarters in Sibiu. A consistent and persistent allied presence here will send a strong message of solidarity, unity, and resolve to defend the southeastern border of the alliance. Polish troops are present in Romania in Craiova. A new Canadian air detachment is conducting air policing in the Black Sea area in MK. Also, in the light of the latest declaration of U.S. political and military establishment, we have good hopes for an increased U.S. military presence on our territory. I am confident that it will also represent an incentive for other allies to join. This should be complemented by substantial political dialogue and consultation, as well as practical support to the main regional partners, particularly Ukraine, Georgia, and Republic of Moldova. 2019 marked a particular point of reference in NATO's approach to the region, revealed by the dec decision taken in Washington in April 
with respect to the Allied package on Black Sea security. It sent a strong message regarding the strategic importance of the Black Sea region for the Alliance security and its commitment to defend it. This package will also increase NATO capacity to promote cooperation with regional partners, as well as support for their defense capacity building, including on maritime security. As a summary, I will say that NATO is required to defend Bucharest and Sofia in the same way it must defend Lisbon and Brussels. Just because the geopolitical circumstances of the Black Sea make NATO's mission here harder does not mean the region can be overlooked. From the European perspective, there is no doubt that Black Sea region is also of strategic importance for the Union. We should use the unique ability in bringing together multiple instruments, combining in an if efficient way uh, uh, either civilian or military action. EU is well equipped to offer a valid perspective for peaceful, democratic, stable and prosperous future of countries in the region. Implementing the EU maritime security strategy while adjusting the action to the specific of the Black Sea is of utmost importance. We have concrete measures in the action plan that offer room to plan and conduct maritime security exercises with third countries, enhance interoperability and improve maritime capabilities, and promote an adequate maritime response in areas of instability. The section of the action plan focused on Black Sea needs to be further developed along those lines if we want the EU maritime security strategy remains relevant for this region. PESCO card and EDF could lead eventually to a better response of the Union to threats and challenges manifesting in the Black Sea area. For instance, the European Union network of diving centers, um, which is a PESCO project coordinated by Romania in complementary with the, de the deployable modular underwater interven intervention capability package, uh, also PESCO project coordinated by Bulgaria, actively contribute to the implementation of EU strategies, strategic priorities in the maritime domain, including the Black Sea region. Finally, let me make a few short remarks on the challenges ahead. The economic impact of COVID-19 will be felt for the rest of this decade. The defense spending in all countries is very likely to be affected. That provides two opportunities. The first is the, is the reshape along the lines of an affordable yet effective defense. The second is using that spending to reinvigorate Romania's industrial base to cutting edge technology. It is important to establish which components are vital, necessary, and take into consideration all the aspects from climate change to cyber in order to strengthen the national resilience, which should be considered a must for an effective and responsive whole of government decision-making process. As a matter of fact, I do believe that a consolidated interinstitutional approach will provide us the ability to operate at the speed of light in any information age. Therefore, strategy must move from a largely 20th century industrial model for a security to a 21st century information and digitalized foundation, realizing that one strategic weakness is the absence of sufficient, uh, of sufficient knowledge and understanding of changing conditions at home and globally. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity, uh, and um, I'm looking for, forward, as you mentioned, Your Excellency, for questions. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Minister. Allow me now to pass the floor uh, to uh, Mr. Taran, Minister of National Defense of Ukraine. 
Uh, at the outset, um, allow me also, Mr. Minister, to introduce some points of your fantastic um, qualifications and uh, CVs. Um, you served as Minister of Defense of Ukraine since March 4th, 2020. During his military service, Mr. Taran occupied various, various command and staff positions in the armed forces, the Minister of Defense and the National Security and Defense Council of Ukraine, including a state expert in the Strategic Planning and Analysis Center and the head of the Military and Diplomatic uh, Directorate. His uh, foreign experience uh, is also impressive, includes posts in, as the Defense and Military Attaché at the Embassy of Ukraine in the United States, and the representative of the Minister of Defense of Ukraine and military advisor to the permanent mission of Ukraine to the United Nations. Uh, the minister participated in the anti-terrorist operation in Donetsk and Lugansk regions. He was the commanding officer for the Ukrainian part of the Joint Center for Control and Coordination on ceasefire and stabilization of the contact line. He contributed to the Minsk trilateral contact group activities, security issues aimed at peaceful settlement of the crisis in Donetsk and Lugansk regions. I should like to kindly ask you, Mr. Minister, to address our meeting. Thank you very much for such a kind introduction. Excellencies, dear participants, dear colleagues, the Black Sea region has geostrategic importance for the Euro-Atlantic security. It is situated at the crossroads of Europe and Asia and has a considerable economic and energy potential. Our common goal is to strengthen stability and security in the Black Sea region. I do believe that it is important not only to identify modern threats in different dimensions, but also to develop joint approaches and initiatives to neutralize them. Until 2008, at such forums, we have discussed mainly asymmetric threats and challenges. The military aggression of the Russian Federation against Georgia in 2008, the illegal annexation of Crimea and occupation of separate areas of Donbass in 2014, drastically changed the scale of threats in the Black Sea region. The main consequence of Russia's armed aggression against Ukraine is a disruption of the balance of power and termination of the existing uh, security cooperation formats. As a result, we have to make additional efforts in order to identify and to neutralize increasing number of threats from the Russian Federation. <coughs> I would like to draw your attention to the fact that Russia is carrying out a large-scale reform of its armed forces to achieve its goals confronting NATO. Russia's armed forces are being equipped with new types of armament and material. They create new formations and military units at a rapid pace. Its infrastructure in the Western strategic direction is being restored and improved. The number and scale of combat training activities on the territory of Russia increases annually. Our assessments clearly show that forces formation and C2 system built up by the Russian Federation for Kafkas 2020 multinational strategic exercise can be potentially used to conduct unpredictable escalatory actions coming from the illegally annexed Crimea and poison threats to the stability in the Black Sea Basin. Of note, tentatively, we expect that this exercise will also feature joint maneuvers of Russian and Chinese combat ships in the Black Sea. Dear colleagues, nowadays the Kremlin has been turning the next Crimea into a powerful military outpost. Moscow has created a forceful formation in the Crimean Peninsula of more than 32.5 thousand military servicemen. By 2025, 
the number of Russian troops in the Crimea and the number of armaments and military equipment is expected to be increased one and a half times. Russia has significantly, significantly reinforced an air component, additionally deploying bombers, assault, fighter, and army aviation. The Gvardijske and Belbek airfields are suitable for two 160 and two 22M3 strategic long-range bombers. Crimea's infrastructure is being prepared for storing nuclear weapons. Anti-access and area denial zones have been created around the peninsula. The surface and subsurface surveillance information system is being improved. Our deep concern is the increased combat capabilities of the Russian naval component. First of all, the deployment of new carriers of caliber type cruise missiles. The total number of missiles in one salvo is 84. One salvo. By 2025, the Russian Black Sea Fleet is to have 25 caliber missile carriers. By militarizing the Crimean Peninsula, Russia seeks to gain full control over the Black Sea Basin. The Kremlin demonstrates its military power to NATO and increases pressure on Ukraine and Georgia as countries pursuing European and Euro-Atlantic policy. On a regular basis, Russia violates air borders of some Black Sea countries. Russian aviation makes simulations of cruise missile launches on targets in the Strait of Bosporus, NATO ships, and naval bases in the Black Sea. Dear forum participants, I cannot fail to mention the fact that conducting naval exercises in the Black Sea, Russia imposes significant restrictions and blocks important merchant routes to international, in international waters, causing economic losses to all countries in the region. At the same time, it continues provoking Ukrainian Navy ships. Under pretext of naval exercises in the Black Sea, Russian Navy always creates multiple denial zones. In some cases, the total area of them is almost a quarter of the Black Sea Basin, amounting 119 out of 437,000 square kilometers. We are confident that in order to address these challenges and threats effectively, we have no other option but to revitalize a reliable system of collective security capable to prevent crisis situations and armed conflicts. The security system must be multifunctional, comprising all spheres of international efforts, political, diplomatic, military, informational, economic, ecological, etc. Until 2014, the Black Sea countries had actively participated in many collective security initiatives. However, Russia's aggressive policy in the region has led to the cessation of many Black Sea joint naval programs. In this changed security environment, we must identify new effective ways of cooperation in the region. We propose the following ones. Substantive intensification of regional interaction, particularly with the Black Sea Economic Cooperation Organization and Organization for Democracy and Economic Development. Enhanced monitoring of the Black Sea State's armed forces. First of all and foremost, the Russian Federation. Strengthening permanent international presence in the Black Sea Basin. It includes NATO's military presence in the Black Sea 
and the Sea of Azov also regions, and the development of naval forces and coastal infrastructure of the Black Sea countries, including Ukraine. Undoubtedly, joint military exercises will foster interoperability and increase the effectiveness of cooperation between the Black Sea countries in response to crisis situations. I would list some of them. Combined exercises and trainings, annual sea breeze, sea shield, and riverine exercises, PASEX, anti-terrorist and humanitarian operations, combat ships, port visits. In order to ensure security and peace in the region and to improve confidence uh, building measures, it is important to hold regular consultations on regional crisis management. These proposals should be considered as a real supplement, just a supplement, to the Alliance collective efforts to execute the package of military measures of the Black Sea security and the tailored forward presence concept. Additional prospective format of cooperation is an exchange of intelligence information on plans and measures of Russia for further militarization of the Black Sea, as well as other threats to the regional security. The basis for such cooperation is the participation of Ukraine and Georgia in NATO's Enhanced Opportunities Program. <coughs> Summing up, I'd like to underline that Russia's armed aggression against Ukraine encourages us to deepen cooperation and integration with partners and to reform the armed forces according to NATO standards. Russia's aggressive foreign policy poses the greatest threat to the security of the Black Sea Basin. That is why countries of the region should further take a consolidated position in condemning and deterring Moscow's illegal actions. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Minister, for your inspiring words, for your inputs. I personally congratulate and I should like to underscore your de determination for regional consultation in order to have prospect of cooperation between our states inside the region, particularly in the matters regarding security and stability. Allow me to inform you that um, we have the benefit of, of uh, cooperation in this uh, panel of some of the friends of New uh, Strategy Center and some of the friends of Romania and the region, experts with immense experience with regard to cooperation in terms of political military security in Europe. And uh, I should like to invite uh, retired General Philip Bridlov, former NATO Supreme Allied Commander in Europe, He's a highly decorated retired general of the United States Air Force, where he reached the highest levels of military leadership as one of the six geographic combat commanders and the supreme allied commander of NATO. Uh, I should like also to inform you that uh, nowadays General, uh, general Bridlove is the distinguished chair of the Frontier Europe, the Middle East Institute, a famous and very respected uh, think tank who is dealing also with the issues of the Black Sea. Um, Philip, please, you have the floor if you want to address our gathering here. We are looking forward to your perspectives. Good morning. Um, it's great to see you all again. It's great to see both of the ministers again. Um, and it is a great day to focus on the Black Sea and to be back in Romania, if you will allow me to say that. As you said, I was recently named to the Frontier Europe e effort of the Middle East Europe Institute. And this is focused completely on the Black Sea. And I look forward to working with all of you as we continue to keep an emphasis on this incredibly important area. It's interesting to me that we should even ask ourselves why the Black Sea matters. The ministers have already pointed out three key NATO allies, two incredible NATO partners, 
These are loyal NATO forces who have participated in all our efforts, key trained, held by all of our friends and allies. The throughput that we have talked about of commerce and energy and the economic opportunities in this region abound. But we have to remember, and both ministers have well pointed out, in that old military saying, the enemy gets a vote. Three times in recent history, Russia has used its ground forces to change internationally recognized borders, once in Georgia and twice in Ukraine. Today, as the minister has mentioned, we see an aggressive set of A2AD around the Crimea Peninsula. And what of what has happened in the Kerch Strait, not only affecting militaries, but affecting commercial impact through the area. And worrying me as much now as it did when I was the SACUR are our interactions in the sea and in the air uh, around Crimea and other parts of the Black Sea. We have to remember that this is international waters for use of all Black Sea nations, and we need to exercise our right to be in those waters. Our preparation, our reply to these challenges requires capability on the air, on the land, and on the sea, both offensive capabilities and defensive capabilities. We have to challenge the A2AD bubble, which covers in some cases over half of the Black Sea region and has affected the work of our Black Sea nations as they sail and fly and exercise in these areas. We need to be able to understand what is happening in these areas, multi-domain awareness, and then be able to command and control in these multi-domain capabilities. This is tough. It's not easy. We work hard for the ability to work together in NATO. We, need, we work hard to remain coordinated and remain net centric in the way that we execute ourselves. And we need to continue to work hard on those issues. All of the good remarks have already been made by the two great friends in front of you. So I'm going to close early and just say that it's really good to be among friends again. And I look forward through the Frontier Europe effort and our continued friendships to ensuring peace in this region together. Thank you for the opportunity to remark. Thank you very much, Mr. General. I should like also to pass the floor now to Mr. James Aputari. Deputy Assistant Secretary General for Political Affairs and Security Policy. Uh, he's responsible for NATO's political relations with countries across the globe, international organizations, enlargement, and arms control. James, you have the floor, please. We are looking forward to your address. Thank you, and uh, thank you for the invitation. I'm sorry I couldn't make it from Brussels but um, this is a, an excellent way to, to be together. Uh, I'd like to also uh, join General Breedlove in noting that the two ministers made such really good um, opening remarks and so comprehensive, both from an ally point of view and a partner point of view that I was sort of crossing off a lot of my briefing. So I, I won't be too, um, too long, but I would like to make a few sort of political and practical points from a NATO uh, headquarters uh, point of view. One is uh, to very much agree with the ministers and, and with General Breedlove on assessment. I guess that's not a real surprise to anyone, but uh, the, the bottom line that everyone has um, alluded to is, in essence, that Russia already was destabilizing partner countries uh, in the Middle East, in the, in the Black Sea area. But the intensive militarization of Crimea has allowed uh, Russia now not just to destabilize the Black Sea region more broadly, including uh, partner, uh, partners and allies, but Russia is also using this as a way to project force all the way into the eastern Mediterranean and to North Africa, as we've seen uh, 
with regard to Syria. So the implications of the deterioration of security in the Black Sea are already serious. They go, however, beyond the Black Sea uh, as well and raise some fundamental new questions uh, for uh, NATO. So I think we all understand what the situation is. The question is, what will we do about it? Um, I fully agree with the Romanian minister when he said, you know, NATO has to defend all of our territory. Yes, the Baltic Sea, but also the Black Sea. And that's 100% correct. And our job is to ensure the defense of every centimeter of NATO territory, wherever it is. And that's what we will do. Uh, so we have taken a number of steps, and the minister alluded to, to many of them, uh, to bulk up uh, the NATO presence in the region. General Breedlove had a lot to do with uh, our bulking up there um, on land, uh, around the multinational brigade in, in Cryova, in the air. Uh, many allies are reinforcing, in particular, Romanian and Bulgarian efforts to protect their airspace. Turkey obviously takes care of its own. Um, I think six F-18s from my own country, Canada, are now or soon patrolling uh, in Romania, which is the fifth um, deployment for Canada under NATO's assurance measures. And at sea, we have the NATO standing maritime groups and naval groups and the U.S. Navy uh, together. They're in the Black Sea over half of the year. So we're doing a lot. Uh, to to increase the NATO uh, presence there, but we can do more. Um, the minister laid out some ideas, and those are being discussed uh, all the time here in NATO. The second thing we have to do is step up our support to and engagement with uh, our key partners in the region, uh, most uh, obviously Georgia and Ukraine. And I think the minister already talked about a lot of what we're doing. We, we've decided to step up our engagement on the military track and on the political track and on the reform track. So we've stepped up political consultations uh, with both partners and we are very grateful for what has become now a regular dialogue when it comes to strategic assessment. To know what is going on in the Black Sea uh, is now a track of work between us so that we have a better overall picture and we hope that it's a two-way street and our partners benefit from that as well. We have taken decisions, a uh, package of measures in April to improve situational awareness, both for us, but also to help our partners in the region to be better able to provide situational awareness for themselves. Uh, so uh, we are now working with um, the navies and coast guards uh, of our uh, partners in the region so that they can be more capable of knowing what's going on and hopefully better able to secure them as well. We have an annual exercise with Georgia, as you know, uh, and um, we're planning for the next one as we speak to demonstrate presence, but also to, to improve uh, capability. And um, while I could go on and on, there are really a, a whole number of practical measures, but we also want to send political signals. That's why the North Atlantic Council visited Georgia and Ukraine in late 2019. I think the region would have probably seen uh, visits from the Secretary General, maybe even already uh, this year, but obviously with, um, with the pandemic, that's not um, possible. Uh, the next thing I would say is we have substantially enhanced our military and intelligence and political focus on what Russia is doing in the Black Sea. Uh, you know, this is part of understanding Russia better. Uh, so as part of our daily work here, this has become an area of focus. I, I can tell you when I arrived at NATO, and that was a long time ago, uh, we really didn't discuss the Black Sea very much. It's kind of unfortunate that circumstances have made it necessary, but now I can be, you know, quite confident in saying to allies and partners, this is now a central plank uh, of the work that we're doing. Um, and as I look forward to the meetings that I will chair in, in the coming months, uh, we will definitely be doing what we can to make sure that the Black Sea is on the agenda. Uh, we have to um, report to allies on what we're doing and what more we can do, and we will be doing that. So the Black Sea is now central to NATO's agenda. It will stay that way. 
It has more complications in some ways than, than the Baltic Sea does, but it is no less important to us. So we will continue to um, invest in that. And finally, let me just uh, note what the Ukrainian minister said about enhanced opportunities partnership. That's very important for us. Um, Ukraine has now joined this group and we are working together to see how we put flesh on the bone to ensure that we maximize the opportunities that this, uh, this offers to Ukraine, as we have done with Georgia as well. So uh, now I turn the floor over uh, back to you and thank you for the opportunity to contribute. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to our distinguished participants for this uh, very significant and valuable insight with regard to the security and stability and the perspective of the Black Sea region. I shall open now the session of questions and answers. We have half an hour of discussions. Please benefit of, for the presence of our distinguished guest. Questions, please. So allow me to start with a question. I should like to address to our, all our guests a question regarding um, the NATO's response to the insecurity in the Black Sea region. As you know, as of uh, Warsaw summit and some summits after that, allies are committed to, and I quote, appropriate measures to develop a tailored forward presence in the southeast part of the Alliance territory and a multinational brigade for training purposes in the region. The tailored forward presence in the Black Sea encompasses, as you know, air, land, and maritime components. May I ask particularly the ministers, are you satisfied with this political and diplomatic decision? Do you think it's covering the problems of and the insecurity in the eastern part of, the, of NATO, or something more should be done from this perspective? Uh, Your Excellency, that's really a very good question. And uh, um, here it's not about being satisfied. Um, here it's about uh, uh, having um, those instruments and uh, the ability to leverage them in order to um, create the capabilities to be able to cope, to face all these challenges and threats we are speaking about. So, as uh, um, Mr. Ap um, Apatrai said, um, that here uh, have been done a lot. Uh, um, many, um, many countries are uh, uh, contributing to all these initiatives. And um, um, I think uh, we as a country did our best in order to maintain the focus uh, to the Black Sea region, not because we are to defend this country, but also because here uh, there is a region where the security context is uh, uh, under day-by-day uh, uh, um, dynamic, day-by-day uh, -day, uh, growing uh, complexity. So uh, from this point of view, yes, there here have been done a lot of things. We recognize that. But as we all recognize, um, never it's enough. Still being room for, for improvements. So uh, here we have two very distinct uh, um, um, expressions, um, enhanced forward presence and tailored forward presence. I think um, um, according 
um, to the decision taken during the summit. Here, uh, um, um, we were um, uh, considering to prioritize the, the threats, the challenges, and to uh, take the appropriate measures. But um, uh, because uh, we are always noticing that uh, the situation is, as I said, uh, daily evolving, uh, we hear that uh, everybody is now focused and uh, looking to um, 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 have that contribution and that presence in order to enhance defense and deterrence along the uh, entire line from Baltic Sea to the Black Sea. So this is how we uh, have to see everything uh, which was done so far and to concentrate on what we have to uh, do in the future in order to um, um, build up that capacity of the uh, NATO ally members and uh, NATO partner countries in order to um, be able to cope with uh, um, the security context in, in, in the Black Sea, in the extended Black Sea area. Thank you very much. Yes, please. Please introduce yourself. I'm uh, Jan Mayanitsa. I'm a journalist. I have two questions, one for the Romanian Defense Ministry, one for the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. And uh, for Mr. Chuka, uh, taking into account uh, the moving of uh, US military from Germany, which prospects are to have more military, U.S. military in Romania? And uh, for the Ukrainian minister, Excellency, what expectation do you have from Romania in security collaboration with U Ukraine in the Black Sea region? What Romania can do to enhance security also for Ukraine in this region? Thank you. So, um, thank you very much for, for this question, and uh, um, I think my answer will be uh, a very quintessential one, taking into account that uh, we have expressed from the very beginning that any increase of the number of soldiers in the area uh, is very welcome, uh, especially from our strategic partner, but um, so far, uh, this uh, has been released uh, uh, to, uh, to the media and uh, known by everybody that the um, U.S. is going to uh, reduce uh, the number of his uh, uh, um, military in, in Germany, but the whole program is under the planning process and decision, and a clear decision has not been taken yet. So. Um, um, we are uh, looking forward uh, to see uh, what will be uh, the number and uh, what we have to do in order to support all these uh, um, redeployments. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for good question. What do we expect? Well, it relates in my opinion uh, really very tight to our forum, Black Sea Security. We expect from our cooperation with Romania to increase the level of security in the Black Sea region. In this regard, I'd like to tell you about what we are doing this September. As you know, there is strategic military exercise, Kafkas 2020, Russian strategic exercise. At the same time, in the same time frame, last decade of September, we in Ukraine uh, have our strategic exercise joint endeavor 
2020. First of all, there is a strategic exercise. And secondly, it is joint exercise. We invited to participate in this exercise our NATO allies. During this exercise, we have three goals. First, to check how effective is the structure of our new general staff. As you know, probably this year we finally changed the structure of our general staff. And uh, from this spring we have J structure, which is a new structure for us. And we are going to test the effectiveness of this change. We would like to understand, was it just change of the names or uh, was it change in sense of having a uh, new approach in the uh, work of our general staff. In this regard, we have particular interest of the countries which are new members to the NATO structure. In particular, of course, our Romania, Romanian ally. Romania already have new structure. Romania already have experience of working within NATO structure. We would like to, we would like to get some thoughts what else shall we do in order to increase our interoperability with NATO. Second goal we have is to check the level of interoperability with NATO command, commanding posts, with NATO commanding structure, with exchange of data, with working uh, jointly during planning military actions. In this regard, we also would like uh, to work together with our Romanian colleagues uh, to better understand what is necessary for us to go further on the way of gaining interoperability. And third, which is also very important for us, for Ukraine, and I believe this is also very important for NATO countries. This is also very important for Romania as well to show Russian Federation, Kremlin leaders, that we are together. Russia, don't even think about increasing your invasion area. Don't even think again about breaking the international law of order. This is also a very important message I believe Russia should get from this exercise we are conducting during this September. And from working together with our Romanian friends, I believe Russia will get uh, understanding that Ukraine is not alone, that the whole international community is supporting Ukraine. NATO countries are supporting Ukraine, and Romania is one of such supporters. Romania is one of our friends within NATO. Thank you. Thank you very much, ministers. Please, if you have another question, point of clarification, anything to address to the distinguished guests we have today. If it, yes, <laughs> if it is not the case, we shall come to the conclusions of, the, we have a question coming from, from the woods. 
Okay. It is a question from Mr. Philip Peterson. What concrete actions can Ukraine and Romania do to, in, to ensure that Russian aggression in the Black Sea does not come to include the seizure of the Snake Island? Interesting question. Someone want to pick up this question? We, we never uh, consider a very specific uh, piece of land to um, be um, 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 part of the planning process of our bilateral cooperation. So, so far, um, we did our best to find the line of efforts of both countries, of both military armed forces, to get along and to uh, establish uh, that uh, bilateral objectives uh, in order to um, increase our um, um, capacity to uh, uh, plan and to uh, conduct uh, training together to uh, be able to um, plan and conduct um, uh, and uh, to take care uh, on an emergency situation as we are uh, doing so far under the TISA initiative. So um, uh, we also uh, have our um, um, uh, maritime components our naval forces planning and training together along the uh, uh, Ukrainian and uh, um, uh, Romanian uh, um, national and international water. And also, we are having our uh, riverine uh, capabilities um, training together. So um, um, I remember having the uh, uh, Air Force Chiefs uh, meeting, uh, having the Navy uh, 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 Chiefs also uh, having a bilateral meeting. And um, also, uh, I remember as being Chief of Defense, I met uh, your former Chief of Defense twice, f um, first time in Romania and second time in Ukraine, and we are having um, in mind uh, to find that uh, uh, um, way to uh, align our efforts in order to be able to cooperate, to plan, and to uh, train together. So these are our main objectives. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Minister? From my perspective, uh, we should look at our Ukrainian-Romanian uh, cooperation, not uh, separately from NATO countries. We consider, and this is true, that Romania is a member, NATO member country. So uh, we work not just with Romania as such. We work with Romania as a member of NATO. So whatever activity, joint activity, we have with Romania, we consider is our uh, cooperation with NATO country, not just pure Romanian. At the same time, there are some certain uh, areas of our very good cooperation. As it was mentioned my, by my uh, distinguished colleague, uh, it is maritime component, this is uh, riverine component. We are working on this, and I believe we will have uh, more activities in these particular areas. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Please, gentlemen there. Thank you, Your Excellency. Uh, my name is Dan Carbunaru. I am director of uh, Cala Europeana, a European Affairs uh, Media Platform. And uh, let me first thank you. Uh, 
uh, Minister Diaconescu for uh, giving me the opportunity to ask a question in a press conference, anyway, not in a press conference, but in a public event after uh, more than half of a year. Uh, I was inspired by uh, what the uh, Romanian Minister of Defense said earlier regarding the hybrid warfare and the spreading the new uh, fake news and propaganda in the region and the way that they can be a fuel for uh, European skepticism. And I would kindly ask you to develop, if you can, uh, Minister, on, on this uh, uh, danger and uh, the tools that the Romanian uh, Ministry of Defense it's intending to use to, to protect uh, this uh, public uh, sphere. Thank you. To develop, um, I think, is not much necessary because everybody knows what's happening and uh, uh, there is uh, a concern uh, regarding uh, this... Uh, um, the relevance of the European Union, and uh, um, we have seen uh, uh, many uh, um, meetings organized to express the skepticism, and uh, uh, that that why um, that's why I, I bring it uh, on my my intervention. Um, what we have to do, um, I have uh, said many times that um, there is no one institu institution who has the ability to cope with all these uh, uh, threats the, uh, and this um, um, uh, propaganda and uh, changing the perception of the people, um, it's included. So um, what we have to do, it's um, uh, to really develop that um, integrated um, um, instru instrumentation of all the institutions which uh, have responsibility on security domain. And um, uh, there is also uh, very much uh, uh, um, delivered by uh, specialists who are working on uh, this uh, um, uh, frame that uh, is known only a responsibility, or it's becoming not only a responsibility for the institutions who are, who are to cope with the security issues, but it's becoming a whole of government responsibilities. So from uh, this point of view, I do really believe that we have to uh, develop the, um, that um, uh, um, um, ability to align the, the uh, capacity of all those instruments of the government to be able to cope with uh, these uh, threats we are uh, facing nowadays. Thank you very much. Please, we have time for just one question. If it not be the case, allow me to thank the excellencies, the ministers of defense from Ukraine and Romania for their presence here, for their contributions. Equally, I should like to thank our foreign guests for their interventions. They are extremely substantive and important insights they've been so kind to provide to us and um, for the particular cooperation between Ukraine and Romania in the field of military affairs, I think that it will be for the benefit, not only on the bilateral basis, but also for the security, instability, and the region. Thank you very much. I should like to adjourn the meeting. <laughs>